He has I to can settle for the stupid fucking robot! <laughs> well, everybody, it's time to finally finish this. This trio of McDonald's Bionicle. You know, it's not as epic once I say it out loud like that. This time, however, I'm gonna end it strong. What do I mean by that? I actually bought them all in in the package, which is a first for me. I did spend a little bit extra for this to happen, but I wanted to make sure that all the pieces were there, and it was really the easiest way to just get them all and just finish everything. I don't really care if it was more expensive or not. Anyways, we got number one, Krika. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. Number two, Onua. Number three, Biddle. I know it's supposed to be pronounced beetle, but like, it's it's just the word beetle, but spelt horribly. Awesome. Number four. Tahu. Oh boy. Number five. You. Golly. That's another oh boy. Number six. Gorast. Number seven. Antraz. And finally, number eight. Toalua. Now... I'm not going to do it in that order because for a while I've just been doing the order of the good guys and then the bad guys and the color order of red, blue, green, white, black, and brown. Just haven't been able to show that off very well because the colors have been a little inconsistent, but that's how it is. Before I get to those, though, I want to do a quick recap of my updated thoughts on the figures and point out some of the stuff that I forgot to mention the first time. So let's go through that real quick, huh? Good old Jawler. Who doesn't like Jawler? Oh yeah, me. It's a good figure. It's probably the most standard and versatile of these that you can get. It's got the basic articulation that you want with the arms, legs, head, and he has the basic firing weapon with, I don't have his, or the, any of the 2006 ones. He also has a sword. Pretty versatile. But he also perfectly captures the Toa Nika. And not in a good way. Like, he's got this overly humanoid face. He just looks like a wrinkly scrotum. Not a big fan of this figure, but hey, it is decent. What else can I say? Ollie is a much nicer figure, as she has a much more balanced and average Bionicle design. Although, her gimmick doesn't work on mine. I don't have anything else to say about this figure. It's... 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 It, it exists. It's good. Matora is probably my least favorite of the figures because he's just as ugly as Jawler, but he doesn't have any head articulation, so he's like a little bit worse. Also, he yellows a little bit. I don't have anything else to add though. All I wanted to point out ever since I was a kid is that he just <laughs> he looks like Mr. Meaty character. And yeah, I already pointed that out, so yeah, whatever. One thing I will say though, they did have this gimmick, which makes no sense, but you know what this could have been useful for? Amari Jawler, because he had the little crab dude that fired for him and was on a leash, so he could pull it back, he could go back. <laughs> Wasted opportunity. Oh well. Naparu's missing his shoulder cannon, but, you know, otherwise he's pretty damn good. He also has a working light. And he has finger articulation, and he looks the least stupid out of all of them. Well, I don't know, Holly looks fine too, but I like his unification of just the... He just has black, which... It looks cool, it looks cool. I think it was a little too harsh on the Paraka outside of Vezok. I wanted them all to just be nice representations of the Paraka, and a lot of them do a couple of unique things to differentiate themselves. And Hakan here is certainly one of those. I don't really like how the Vaki head was something they just threw on, because while it is a cool reference, it's just kind of out of place and looks weird, it is still pretty cool. Also, I forgot to mention, because I didn't know this at the time, but all of them have glow-in-the-dark teeth. Which I can't really show you, unfortunately, but it is cool. Vezok's fucking cool. That's it, that's all I gotta say, I don't have anything else to say about that. Zaktan's apparently the leader of the Paraka. I... I guess he is? I always still view it as Vezok as the main villain. I mean, he was in Bionicle Stars as Tahu's rival. Maybe it's because they wanted to use Gresh and they couldn't use him, so I don't know. I mean, they barely look like the Paraka anyway, so I don't... I don't think that really matters. He was also on all the promo images. He's in the middle of, like, the Paraka rap. How the fuck is this guy the leader? I mean, he's not that great. He's got a terrible gimmick that just kind of gets in the way. 
he has kind of awkward articulation. His design is less not as solid, and then his weapon just looks kind of stupid. Not a bad figure still, but of the eight, probably the least good. But I still prefer it over Jawler and Matoro. Now, design-wise, Radox probably my least favorite of the Paraka, just because I think his goggles look really stupid. But hey, it's still a good figure. He also has the best gimmicks. So that's nice. I still think he's a really solid figure, and he's up there, just got some personal issues with him. I don't have much else to say about Holly. She is a cool-looking figure, but she just seems out of place, and I, again, really wish she was a bit more in scale and just a normal stance, so she could have actually been one of my favorites. And also, like I said, it would have been cool if you pressed the button and these spread out, but I guess manually articulated wings is still pretty cool, too, so I'm not complaining. I don't know why I grouped this dude in with Takadox and Karapar. He's not that cool. Still pretty cool, but I don't even think he's one of my favorite designs of the Toamari, but, you know, he's still probably my favorite of the four. Like I said with Matoro, it is a figure that I really want to like, but his shoulder articulation is just kind of unfortunate. Still a cool figure, just not one of the best. Nepaaru. Very may well be the most unnecessary figure of the three lines. And I really wish they could have done Hyuki because right now we're four for four on black figures in the Bionicle line. I feel like they could have been okay with three and then allowed Brown to have two. But hey, you know what? This actually does look cooler than the real figure. He's a lot bulkier, so that's nice. And his gimmick is really fun, so it's still a good figure. I just really wish they went with the other two because, like I said, I feel like Jawler would have been really nice to have in the Mari line. And, you know, the pole crab thing's cool. And, of course, I heard, I'm not going to talk about Hyuki anymore. Still, not yet for what we got, not a bad figure, by any means. Calm is cool, although this is kind of weird because it's supposed to have, like, flame effects, but they put these black lines, I guess, to show it, to make it look a little bit more squid-like. I don't know. Again, like I said, he's a little bulkier and bigger than usual, and he is a little bit in an interesting stance, but, you know, his limbs still move pretty well, so you know, it's not really a big deal. I said him and Mantax were only okay. That's just comparing him to the rest of the Baraki. He's still one of my favorites. Despite not being perfect, Takanox is still my favorite figure. The one thing I forgot to mention is that instead of having a gun for an arm, they could have made a gimmick to where you push his head and kind of opens and closes like a snapping feature. Would have made sense why he doesn't have head articulation even though he probably should. Doesn't change the fact that I still love this figure. I feel like I was a little too harsh on this guy in my initial review. It's still a cool figure, it's just I don't have much else to say of him. Not only is he the most bland and average of the Baraki, but I also had him the longest, so he's just kind of always existed. Like, yeah, he's there. He's cool. Karapar is still fun. Okay, now on to the actual review. <laughs> oh boy. What a great way to start off the final review with the worst redesign in Bionicle history. 2008 was a special year. They had some cool, interesting, and completely unique villains that they didn't really have any flow with each other, but they were pretty cool. But the main characters were just weird reinterpretations of the characters that barely looked like them. Hmm, sounds familiar. This was one of my reintroductions into Bionicle, just this video in general. And watching it, I was just like, okay, so is it just a bunch of random cool aliens versus these Hero Factory tier level main characters? If I knew that this was supposed to be this guy, I think I would have cried. This is just a terrible looking figure. But you know what? That's not the fault of the set, it's the fault of the actual figures, so let's just try and get past that, huh? The other three are nowhere near as bad. Still not what I would call good, but they did pick, I think, what I would call the two best looking ones. But yeah, I'd say overall, you could call these pretty much anybody, like this doesn't really resemble Tahu in any way. And there's really only one of these that I'd say actually looks like the character. And when it comes to the actual figure's feel, it's very strange. They don't all feel the same, first off. Some of them feel normal, but then there's ones like this, where they have a bit more of a plasticky feel. You put this in, and it's kind of got, like, this rubber plastic feel. It's very strange, but then there's some parts, like the gun, that are plastic. A lot of them feel like the gun, which is very strange. I noticed that right out of the package. But he's probably the most interesting, because... I don't know if you collect Minimates, but... 
after like 2013, 2014, I'd say, they started feeling chalky. I don't know if it's so they don't degrade over time. Like, I, I picked up a lot of Mini Mates recently, and almost all of them were really sticky. I guess it's so they don't do that, but it is very uncomfortable feeling. And he kind of has that going on, particularly with his feet. Maybe it's just the paint. I don't know. Anyways, he's got his gimmick being his fan thing. He does the same thing that a couple of the figures from the previous wave, namely Naparu and Karapar, do. And it's still just as cool. In fact, I actually might say that this is the best of the three. Not only is this really fun and satisfying, but if you happen to not have the fan, which, you know, a lot of the time these are lost... The actual limb doesn't look too, too bad. Like, when I first got Kalma with this guy, if you don't have this, he's just missing a hand. He looks like Scorpino. So it's nice that they went out of their way to mold a little bit of hand detail, even though this does look kind of dumb. But I mean, does that look much better? They don't have real hands. It's okay. This is later years of Bionicle. They got weird as hell. So... Despite being kind of an awkward design, and he is in a bit of a pre-pose, it's not so bad. I'd still say it's actually a fairly nice figure, and in terms of articulation, he only has the limbs. I guess this head is a little bit too stupid. I mean, different to articulate, so that's fine with the scale and price of these figures. I don't expect head articulation on this design, per se. Yeah, Tobatahu, a terrible design, but hey. Decent adaptation. Oh, Telegali. What a fucking mess you are. I actually am going to say it. I think this is one of the two designs I don't mind from 2008. I know, that's blasphemy to say everyone hates Telegali. And granted, this figure does have some awkwardness when it comes to her anatomy. She's got these ridiculously long limbs particularly the legs, and her body is so tiny. I mean, look at that. But I will say, I do kind of like the mask. Sure, it is kind of weird, and I guess it fits Kopaka a little better, but, like, come on, man. Nuju had that, too. Who cares? It's an overall cool design for the mask. I wish these moved. They do not move. And the thing is, the reason I like Toa Gali so much is, I've already told you this, or at least I've said this on my main channel, my introduction to the blue girls of Bionicle was no comma, and she was the boring one. And because I played the Game Boy Advance game as a kid, the one where you play as Takua, and you use that mask, which is also pretty boring, I just assumed that was going to be for the original girl, Bionicle. But no, she actually has the coolest and most interesting mask outside of maybe Lua. And I just thought that made her the coolest because she was just so abstract and cool looking. And she still kind of has that with this. It's just, I don't know, her anatomy is a little weird. I wish she had a bit more of a normal body. Anyways, I have to say this figure is really good because there's a, there's a couple of figures that have these big cannons. And in any other line... And I'll show this off a little better in another figure. They would just have... So, okay, she's got, like, a cool firing rocket, so her arms are immobile. But not only do they move, like I showed you, but you can even disconnect one of them. And with the other one, you can still move it around and pose it. That's so cool. Anyways, unlike the previous figures, which had cardboard for the ammo, you actually get a normal missile, which is pretty cool in the buttons on the back, so... Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I know some people don't like Toa Gali, and I do think the limbs do get in the way of each other, but hey, this is actually a pretty cool figure, so... Gali surprisingly gets a thumbs up from me. <laughs> Alright, so if you weren't tired of my hot takes from Toa Gali being somewhat good, I don't like Fantoka Lua. He's just so bland. I don't get why everyone says that with the Fantoka ones, you can kind of see the resemblance to the old characters. Like, okay. Kopaka, yeah, he's got the eye thing. It looks stupid, but yeah, you can see it. He does look like a version of Kopaka. Pohatu. You know what? He looks very unusual. He's got weird anatomy. I can kind of see that one. This one? No, I don't see it at all. I, I just, I don't. He looks like the comma. You know what? He actually looks like Holly. To Okay, don't tell me. First off, yeah, this guy's really fucking short. Holy shit. But second off, don't tell me you don't see the resemblance. I mean, I always associate Lua with his dark greens, his devilish grimace, and his cool-looking eyes. This is about as far away from that as you can get. 
as far as gimmicks goes, he is, doesn't have one. In fact, a lot of these don't actually have a gimmick, which is fine. I think gimmicks are probably my least favorite part of these figures. I mean, they're the least important ones, I should say. But all he does is that you can move his sword out, and that's it. I do have the instructions, and his is really funny. Did you know you can move the sword? Yeah, that's like the entirety of Toa Mari. All the figures from the last video could have done that. This is nothing special. Also, again, his limbs are a little loose, and I got them all fresh sealed, so that is kind of annoying. But, like I said, I don't hold loose limbs against a figure unless it's a widespread issue, and no, it's just kind of an inconsistent thing. Sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're tight. I don't, it's not really... An objective thing to criticize, so I don't bother. So he's a cool figure if you like him. I do like the fact that he can kind of perch his sword on his shoulder, but I don't really. So this one's just kind of a middle of the road figure for me. Not bad, just. Eh. All right. Well, I've talked about the rest of the Toa, and I didn't love any of them. I said I liked Golly, but that was kind of a soft like. Almost a pity like. So that just leaves Toa Onua. And I gotta be honest. What the fuck is wrong with critics? No, seriously. What the hell? That was an awesome fucking Toa. Toa Onua. They just took all of the stuff about him originally. The long limbs, the bulk, I guess. And the details for the eyes and the mouth. And they just upgraded it and made it look cooler. Now, granted, it does look a little bit on the Hero Factory side, and yes, I know these came before Hero Factory. Don't, don't fucking tell me otherwise, I already know. But I, I still think of the four, it's by far the best design. And unlike the others, this is a very specialized stance. I mean, his arms are in a specific pose, his legs are in a specific pose, but despite that, he still does have articulation. Like, in another line, like Lego Batman, Cool line, probably my favorite McDonald's line of all time. You got a lot of cool figures like Batman, Mr. Freeze, Joker. But then you had Robin, who had a giant cannon, and he was just an immovable statue with, like, I don't know, a little bit of head. But this, no, every single limb can move. And again, you can separate the weapon, you can move it around. I mean, for a figure that basically costs a dollar, that is really good, of course. Ah, fuck, this does not want to go. That's how it gets you. I, I was like, okay, why does this not want to fire? And then I <laughs> point it in, like, the least helpful direction, and then it finally fires. So, yeah, you got to be careful. It's a sneaky little bugger, this one is. Yeah, Toa Nua, it's kind of unfortunate that he's along the lines of the previous year where they were a bit more specialized with their stances, so they're less versatile. But, hey, he's still pretty awesome with the fact that he has such a dynamic gimmick, and he loses no articulation. No, don't pull! No! Ah! Okay, so that was the Toa done. Not the big fan of the designs, but they're all pretty good, even Onua, who you'd think I would dislike because of how over-the-top he is, but no, I actually liked all of them. Now it's time to get to the real meat and potatoes, the villains. I have a weird feeling about the villains. They're cool. But in a very different way, like the Bo-Rock, the Baraka, the Baraki, they all look like a team. You can tell that they were designed after color and basic standard design in mind. Whereas these ones, they're just like, eh, fuck it, just make them all Makutas, and they just look variously evil, and they don't really look like a team. And I didn't notice this at first, but they're all based off of a color. I could barely tell. It's kind of interesting that they actually split it up, so you have three Toa and three villains, and they had different colors, like the Fantoka had green, brown, and white, and then the villains were red, blue, and black, and then vice versa with Mystica. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to do it in a reverse order, because I feel like ending on Beetle would just be kind of weird, and I'm saving the coolest for last, so... I interesting, that's kind of how I feel. 2008 was not my favorite, but, you know, it's still cool in its own way, especially when it comes to the villains. And good old Beetle here may have a terrible name, but he's kind of cool. I kind of get him confused with Gorath, who, in my mind, is just she's just way cooler than Beetle, who just kind of looks generic, I and mean, he's just kind of a bug guy. I mean, they try to make it so it's like, okay, the Fantoka villains are all like flying bats, and you get that with one of them. And then the others are insects, but then you have Krika, who doesn't really look like a bug. So, you know, okay. How about the actual figure? Well... 
It's another brown figure, technically yellow, but you know, let's just ignore that. At least we got one more brown figure and we didn't just get the one. So that's kind of nice, even though I don't really associate this with being a brown figure, even though it has the exact same color scheme as my beloved Huki. So yeah, I'm just kind of an idiot. I really like how this figure does have a firing cannon that it just has on one of the blades. Although mine, very, very loose trigger. And you can actually pose one of the claws. That's pretty cool. The fact that they managed to find a way to slap that on one of the claws and it moves. Again, this line just oozes quality. And while I really love Tachydox, I really wish they did something like what they did with Beetle. Like this claw may have just one of these, but then kind of the cannon on the side. That would have been cool. Anyways, we finally get head articulation again and wings. So how many points is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine points of articulation for a McDonald's figure. And the fact that he doesn't have a bunch of limbs like, oh, I don't know, the Randall. That's actually really impressive. So Beetle may not be my favorite design of the villains, but still a really, really good figure. No, don't pull. No. Ah! Krika looks really cool. But he has probably the saddest excuse for a gimmick. I know I already made fun of Lua's gimmick, but I just have to show you this. <laughs> oh, if you press on this, you can move his arms. So basically, you can move his arms like every other figure, just in a more inconvenient way. It's a lot easier to just do this than this. Awesome. A lot of people have him stand like this, but he's supposed to be on all fours, all tippy toes, so that's cool. Again, he also has the head articulation and the cannon. Would have been really cool if this fired, but hey, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine, doesn't have to. Not much to say, it's just a really cool looking figure. No, don't pull, no! Ah! Next up, we got Shuma Gorath, and I gotta say, he is my favorite character. I think Gorath here is one of the three that I think about the most when it comes to these enemies. And that's why I'm kind of glad that these ones have a much better character pick than 2007, because 2007 had, like, my three favorite characters omitted. Although, again, Takadox is the one they did. But here they did my favorite Toa of the eight. <coughs> and then you have the four by far best looking enemies. The other two flying blue black ones. We, we get too many blue and black figures already. We've, we've had plenty of them. I think it's fine to just omit them this time. And so the, the much more interesting looking ones. Great call. Gorath doesn't really have any cool gimmicks, but she does have a lot of articulation because, like I said, six arms. <laughs> You can also move her wings, but while they do look cool and in person, they have this really cool effect. You actually can kind of pick up on that. That looks kind of neat. They're kind of uncomfortable. They're annoying. They don't, they might, they feel like they might break. So probably my least favorite part of the figure, but hey, Gorath is a pretty neat looking figure in that head. She kind of looks like a pod racing alien from episode one. Anyone else feel that way? Anyone? Maybe that's why I like her so much. No, don't pull. No. Ah! And finally, we got Antros. What a cool looking motherfucker. Now, I think the actual figure itself is not one of my favorites. I think I like the bugs a lot better. But this is such a good redesign because it actually looks better than the source figure. He's got these slender looking claws. He's got a much more menacing and cooler looking head. I think Antros was supposed to be a really, really dumb character. And I'll admit, the original figure does capture that quite oh, nice. But this one does look a lot more menacing. And it kind of makes me feel like because he's not a bug with instead of like a bat creature, like he's the leader of the group, even though he very, very, very much isn't. Now, apparently this gimmick is that you can move these down. I mean, okay, that does look cool, but these are supposed to be his wings, so... I, I don't know. I wish these looked a little bit more like wings, but you know what? Perched back here, he just looks really cool. You know what? This is the big bad boss. I know they're all supposed to be Makutas, but, you know, this one looks the most Makuta-like. This is the boss of all three lines. Great way to end it. And there we have it, everybody. Bionicles 2008, Mystica, Fantoka, whatever you want to call them. How good is this line compared to the other two? Well, it may not have the good designs of 2007. They're overall a lot better. I can't really say a figure here that I dislike. I guess old Taku here. 
is not a very good design, but it's still a really fun figure. The other three Toa do have their issues, but I still like all of them and the four villains, despite the fact that they don't really have a unification thing going on with their designs, are still really neat. Not to mention the absolute quality on some of these figures, even if some of them are lacking a huge gimmick, is just really, really, really impressive. I'd say it's the best of the three, and if you had to only get one line, probably 2007, because come on, it's Bionicle 2007. But I will say, if you're after the quality and you don't care much about the designs, this one's by far the one I would recommend the most. It's got variety, they look pretty good, and they have a lot of function. So I guess that's it, right? Nothing else to talk about? Well, how about we finish this by ranking every single figure from worst to best? And I'm going to do a mix based off of how good it is and how much I like them. Ready? Here we go. But Toro's straight at the bottom because he looks ugly and he has a stupid gimmick. While far from a bad figure, Jollard is just about as ugly, but hey, at least he's functionally pretty good. Speaking of functionally pretty good, but a really ridiculous looking figure, we get Tahu, who probably looks the worst, although Matoro might just beat him out on that. He is a really fun figure, so I can't hate him too much. Mari Matoro is the exact opposite, being a figure who looks really good, but as a toy is probably the worst of them all. Next we got Zack Tan, who I love the Paraka, y'all know that, but this one is just kind of awkward, not very good. Finally we get Holly, who's in an awkward scale, an awkward pose, but otherwise looks pretty cool. I'd say out of the three not very good figures, she's the most good, so I put her a little higher. Alright, now we're getting to the figures who are just pretty good, and first we're starting off with Lua, who's fine, doesn't really have a gimmick, so otherwise he's fine, but not one of my favorites. Holly is the most average figure out of the group. That's all I gotta say. Pudding Golly is the best of three water Toas may seem blasphemous, but I really like her function and her form, in my opinion, isn't so bad. She might have been even higher if her limbs weren't so awkwardly proportioned, and they didn't get in the way of each other while moving. Paru is just a slightly above average version of Holly. While he may be my least favorite of the six Toamari, that's not saying much because I do like all six of the Toamari, and while he may be the most unnecessary, he's still pretty cool and has a fun gimmick. Onua gets the highest of the Mystica Toa just because I think design-wise he's the best, and I think his function, while it is a little worse than Gali's, is still very impressive because of all the stuff he's tasked with. But there can only be one winner of the Toa, and that one goes to Kongu, for he's probably the coolest looking overall, and he's got the simplicity of the earlier figures. Only it wasn't so short. The next Baraka is Radok, and he's got a fun gimmick, and overall does look pretty nice, even if I think his goggles do kind of suck. Now we're getting to the really good shit. And we're going to start that off with Beetle, who looks a little too similar to Gorass, but has so much quality that I can't place him any lower. Speaking of which, Gorast is an overall fun figure that's just really cool and has lots of fun articulation. Just a simple, easy, good toy. It was kind of hard choosing between this and the next one for my least favorite of the Baraki, but the reason I put Kalma the lowest is because, number one, I think his head design's probably the least cool, but more importantly, if you don't have this weapon, which is very easy to lose, he's a lot less good. Mentax is simple, but effective. As awkward as he may be, Hakan is still an overall nice-looking Paraka, and while it is a little unnecessary and stupid, I do appreciate this reference. Krika is a very simple figure, but he is really cool, and he's got a lot of cool clear parts with colors inside, like the red. It makes him look really devilish, and makes up for the fact that we didn't get a Krydok. Vezok is the real leader of the Paraka in my heart, and he's my second favorite of the group. If only they made a Thok. It seems kind of weird to put Karapar this high up, but he is monumental. And the fact that he is the first of the brown figures we got, and he is one of the only two we got, the other which being Beetle. And he's also one of the most fun and satisfying figures too, so that's pretty cool. Antroz is a really nice finale to all these figures, and he is... Probably the coolest looking one. And of course that leaves Takadox as my favorite of the group. I always liked Takadox as a kid, and he's one of the only few ones where one of my favorite characters of these three years actually got a figure. So he's one of the only ones that makes me unapologetically happy. And now for fun, let's talk about the characters who didn't get used. 
just as a quick honorable mention to those, I'm going to rank them based off of least wanted to why didn't you get added. I don't know what these blue and black Fantoka guys are called, but I'm glad that they weren't picked. I don't hate them the most out of all the unused characters, I think they're fine. But the four that they did use are much, much better, even like Beetle. Not to mention, we've already had tons and tons of blue and black figures. Like before 2008, we've had four of each, so I think we're good on missing out on these guys. Kopaka is an okay figure, I guess. I kind of like how he actually has the wings, unlike Lua who just flies with his mind, I guess. But I think of the six, he's probably the least interesting, and while I probably would have preferred him over, like, Tahu or something, I'm not losing sleep on him being excluded. The only reason Pohatu is any higher than Kopaka is that he's brown. That's it. Again, if they picked him over Tahu, then the actual character choices would have been perfect, but it, it, you, it's a perfect choice of six Bionicle where I really only like one and another one is a guilty pleasure, so I'm not losing sleep. Speaking of which, it's actually kind of weird that for how much of a suck-up I've been for brown Bionicle representation, mostly because I feel like it not being used at all is just kind of sad. I can kind of see what they're going for because a lot of the brown toe are just kind of bland. Like, Yuki's just a worse Naparu, he's not even that brown, so I feel like him not being used in the first year is fine. Kongu is the most average Anika dude, and honestly, the fact that I don't like the Anika at all except for maybe Holly and maybe Naparu means that, yeah, I don't really care that they picked Kongu. The only universe I could see myself caring is that they had Kongu in the first year instead of Holly, so then they didn't have to make him in the second year and they could have used the other two that weren't used instead. That would have been cool, but like otherwise, I don't, I don't care. I think it's fine. Speaking of which, now we're getting to the ones that I do feel at least a little bad that they got left out. And this is the only time that they had a good Jolder design, and he didn't get a McDonald's figure. No, seriously, even his Matoran did. And might I remind you of how much of an obnoxious asshole he was. Avok is not only a cool paraka that also I like for really stupid reasons, he's also the last time a brown Bionicle figure was actually brown before they switched over to either yellow or orange. So yeah, it would have been cool to have one last final brown figure, but nope. Prydok is the leader of the paraka and probably the most memorable one, even if he's not my personal favorite, which we will talk about next. So yeah, him being excluded is kind of unfortunate, especially considering the fact that they had a Matoro, why not him? Although, Krika is a very similar character design, if not a little bit cooler, so I'm kind of okay with this. Elek is easily my favorite of the Paraka, and it kind of sucks that he was left out. Though I can kind of see it, because I feel like a lot of the ones do have a purpose of being there. Not to mention, he must be a really difficult character to make because of his spines, like... How do you translate this into a simple $1 McDonald's toy? And just like Elec was my favorite of the Baraki, Thonk is easily my favorite of the Parakas. Probably for nostalgia reasons, because he was one of the only few Bionicle sets I actually owned as a kid, but he's easily one of my favorite sets of all time, and he's a perfect representation of everything I like about the Paraka. I know I complained about Mantax being just kind of a standard Baraki, but Thonk being the standard Paraka is actually a good thing, and the fact that he got omitted is really, really sad. He's my favorite of the characters that didn't get picked, however, it's pretty obvious that Hyuki was going to be the one that I feel like was the most unfortunate of the ones that got left out, because we haven't had a single brown Toa in the entire line. And while I don't like two of them, this would have been the perfect opportunity to at least have one. He also has a secondary color of black, so he could fill in that black Toa thing as well. When I first saw him on TTV's worst list, I genuinely thought he was the black Toa of Underwater. I don't know what his gimmicks would be, but he's got a giant gun hand, so... I don't know, it's pretty easy to just slap that on there. Or just have his staff spin like Naparu's shield. Either way, while I don't like him as much as Thok or even Elec, the fact that he was omitted is just a crime. Considering the fact that the brown representation was pretty low, and the fact that we didn't get a single Hyuki figure once, so we didn't get a complete team. And to finish things off, let's just count off how many figures each color got. Five red figures, five blue figures, four green figures, three white figures, that's actually a lot lower than I expected, five black figures, and finally, a whopping two brown figures. Yikes. Okay, now we're done, right? Huh. You know, how do I end this? There is one idea I have, but no, 
No, no, no, just, no, I can't, no, I can't stop it! The Water Buffalo Song Everybody got a water buffalo Yours is fast, but mine is slow Oh, where'd we get them? I don't know But everyone's got a water buffalo I took my buffalo to the store Got his head stuck in the door Spilled some llama beans on the floor Oh, everybody's got Stop a it. water Stop buffalo Stop it! Right this instant What do you think you're doing? You can't say everyone's got a water buffalo When everyone does not have a water buffalo We're gonna get so many nasty letters saying Where's my water buffalo? I don't have a water buffalo And are you prepared to deal with that? I don't think so Just stop being so silly Everybody's got a baby kangaroo. Yours is pink, but mine is blue. Hers was small, but then ah! it's... There we go. Now it's all good. Now it's done.